This football stadium seats 62,000 fans and covers an area of 20 square acres. Today on Indiana Drones, we're going to be flying drone LiDAR and drone photogrammetry to make an accurate three-dimensional model of this entire facility. So stay tuned and learn all about it and how we create an accurate 3D model on today's episode. Let's fly! Drone mapping has gained popularity for its ability to provide facility operators and engineers an up-to-date and 3D model of the building, and in this case, stadium, that they're working on. You can right away understand that it would be very difficult to design a renovation or an addition to the stadium without knowing exactly where everything was located. Now you could look at the CAD models or the blueprints, but that wouldn't capture any of the changes that have occurred over time or possible deviations that happen during the construction process. So that's what we're out here doing today. We're out here making an accurate 3D model so that way the engineers can make measurements off our model, they can see the current landscape of the land and also update their CAD models as needed. Now accuracy is absolutely critical. You may recognize this device from the LiDAR land surveying video. This is the Emlid Reach RS2 GNSS receiver and we use it to collect very accurate ground control points. Now, after last week's video, Imlet reached out to us and agreed to sponsor this video. Imlet has been around for five years producing high quality and affordable GNSS receivers. The Reach RS2 is their latest flagship multi-band receiver capturing GPS, GLONASS, Baidu, and Galileo constellations. The Reach RS2 has up to 22 hours on a single charge. The hardware is light, compact, and very rugged. <laughs> Now, if you're ready to up your drone game and purchase one of these survey kits, just use the link below in our description or the link up above in the video. Using this link helps us in providing and making great content for you. We really appreciate it. Well, let's go ahead and start collecting ground control points, shall we? The ground control point is the cornerstone into getting an accurate three-dimensional model. Now that I told you a little bit about these REACH RS2 survey kits, let's tell you about how they're working. Right now we have this one unit set up as a base collecting GPS data and transmitting corrections over to a second unit. This is called the rover. When they're in communication, this is getting two centimeter precise data at all times. So let's go ahead and use this unit and go and collect some of those ground control points. We just finished collecting all the ground control points for our missions today. Now it's time to start planning the mission plans for both the flights. So for both the LiDAR and the photogrammetry, we're going to plan the mission to be doing a crosshatch pattern. That's where we fly down and up the field, and then also we're going to go at a 90 degrees and fly left and right. This way we're going to collect data from every angle, that way we're going to be able to represent and recreate this three-dimensional model really accurately. And I just can't tell you how excited I am to see what this is gonna look like in 3D and a 3D model. So be sure you stay tuned to the end of the video to see all the results that we're gonna get. Can't wait to show you. But now, it's time to fly. Let's fly. <laughs> We're gonna make such an awesome 3D model. We're flying the photogrammetry of the Inspire 2 right now. We just launched the LiDAR drone into the air. We're capturing the stadium behind us. Welcome back to the studio in the office. We just got done flying both that photogrammetric and the LiDAR mission at the stadium. And I just finished processing both the data sets and I already took a look. They look awesome. But before we jump into looking at the LiDAR and the photogrammetric data, 
I want to make a shout out for theindianadrones.com. This is our new website where we are having a newsletter and we're putting blog posts and we're hosting all this data. So if you want to learn more about LiDAR, photogrammetry, industrial drones, and everything of this topic nature, we're going to be putting over there at theindianadrones.com. Just go over there and subscribe to the newsletter and we'll be getting you some cool information real soon. Now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and just jump in and take a look at this data. So here is the LiDAR data. This is fantastic. It looks really, 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 really good. You can clearly see the edges of all the structures and the buildings. And look at the structure right here. Very accurately captured. We use that MLID with the Reach RS2 to get ground control points to tie all of this data into the local coordinate system. We did that same thing with the photogrammetry mission. So now, both the photogrammetry mission as well as the LiDAR data were all tied into the local coordinate system about two centimeters accurate. So they're both accurate and precise. So one thing I wanna take a quick look at is these minute details. And one thing that's gonna make this really highlighted is looking at the bleachers. I was curious about, can we see in between the bleachers to where your feet go? So getting down in between each one of those bleachers and taking an accurate measurement of that. Let's just do it visually and see what it looks like. I think that looks pretty good. That looks really good. Yeah, we're actually able to get data in between those bleachers and capture in between those little areas. That's very useful, very useful. And look at that, hold on. Wow, that's really cool. I did not expect to see that, but we actually were able to capture some information underneath the bleachers in this concession stand area. Oh, that must have been from the opening. Yeah, that's exactly what it, it was from the opening from these holes here where the stairs come up. Yeah, the lighter came in and captured data. Wow, very, very cool. Very cool. You can see here on the backside, we, we didn't get any data right there, so it's all black. Well, that was awesome. That was the LiDAR data from the stadium. Now let's go ahead and pop on over to the photogrammetric data and see what that 3D model looks like. So here we have our 3D model from the photogrammetry data. So we use a software called Drone Deploy to compute this in the cloud. And it looks really awesome. I mean, look at that. You can actually see all the lettering. It's on the signage. That's very cool. Very beautiful. Let's take a look at the buildings too. Very well done, very well done. Oh, we have some missing data back here too, but this is interesting. See this? So now when you have missing data in LiDAR, it just isn't there. But here, it's still trying to stitch this stuff together even though there isn't really any data there. Now let's look at one other big key difference. So as we were talking earlier about this minute data and these little details, we check a look at the bleachers and we're trying to see in between them with LiDAR data. Well, let's do the exact same thing with the photogrammetric data now too. So as you can see right here in the photogrammetric data, it kind of blurs in between each seat. And this is exactly what I was expecting. Now with photogrammetry, in order to get these really crisp edges and see in between things, you're gonna need a ton of photos to resolve that. And usually you just don't have that. So when you have a situation where you have like 90 degrees or really close cracks or small areas, it's gonna just kind of blend over that. And that's, that's a very common effect you're gonna see all the time. You can even see it down here on these chairs and ble bleachers. Um, so right here where the, the, the football players will sit. Yeah, it looks very, yeah, you see it right there. That's very common in photogrammetry. That's what you expect. And so that's kind of the difference when you would use LiDAR or photogrammetry to make a 3D model. LiDAR is gonna give you much more crisp data. You're gonna see in between things really well, but then again, you're using a much more expensive system and it costs more. So if you just need to get out there and make a photorealistic 3D model, you can do it this way with the, with the Inspire drone or a Phantom drone or another camera drone. And then you can actually go through and tweak it and tune it up a lot in the post-processing as well. It's just much more hands-on. Uh, and, and, the, and the other big difference is that it's not a direct measurement. You're actually computing this. So whereas the LiDAR data, this is more of a direct measurement. It's sending out light, it's measuring that distance, and it's actually projecting it directly onto the ground. So that's kind of the big difference. Well, there you go. That was the LiDAR and the photogrammetry mission. You just saw the data from both of them. 
I hope you guys can share with me what you think about this and when do you think one would be better than another one or uh, what would you like to see maybe models with this technology? I'd love to see that all in the comments below. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them down there. I hope you guys liked the video. Oh yeah, if you wanna see this data, it's over at theindianadrones.com. We have a blog post, newsletter, and we're gonna host all this data so you can go see it over there. And if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, we're gonna make many more like this, so give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and stay tuned for the next one. We love making these videos. See you guys next time on Indiana Drones. See ya. Start it up.